Howdy folks, Dave of Chaos Crafting here. Due to real life scheduling issues, my D&D campaign has been put on hold. I mean, my god, it's like herding cats. So I've changed my focus to some Warhammer 40k projects I have sitting around. I was thinking maybe I could do some Warhammer 40k terrain. And just for grins and giggles, I popped over to the Games Workshop web store just to see what they have. And I gotta say, I was a little gobsmacked by the prices of some of these kits. Don't, don't get me wrong, Games Workshop produces a fine product, just not fine for my wallet. So for this video, I'm going to build some inexpensive Warhammer battlements. Now this could be suitable for any war game you wish to play. We can fill a full table with terrain for under $25. Once again, I'm using pink XPS foam. I mean, I hope you can get this where you live. This is excellent for terrain building. I grabbed two project panels and a sheet of hardboard. The hardboard is an eighth of an inch thick MDF sheet. It makes great bases for your terrain. It's resistant to warping whenever you coat it with paint. And it adds a bit of weight to the piece overall. Now the tools you'll need, well of course a Proxon, I mean legitimately this is the best hobby investment I have ever made. And you're going to need something to cut the hardboard, like a jigsaw or a dremel. I mean if you really had to, you could go the manual route and use a coping saw, but that seems like a lot of work. In my previous builds, I've used a lot of bevels. So when I grabbed some pink foam from the scrap box, I found a lot of interesting shapes. This, this could make a cool battlement or a trench wall. And these bits would be great for, for detail. So I threw together a quick prototype. This piece of terrain cost about $2 to make. Yeah, my walla likey. Well, let's keep going. Time to jump right into foam cutting with the Proxon. Start with one inch by one inch columns of XPS foam. These should be a little over 12 inches in length. I'll use the Proxon's cutting guide and set the cut angle to 22.5 degrees. This will give the bend that I'm looking for in the wall. After the first cut, I will measure and mark three inches for the second cut. Uh, of course, adjust these measurements to fit the needs of your design. After the second cut, you will have a trapezoid shape. You're gonna want a bunch of these, so keep cutting. Here is where it gets tricky. Time to make the complex bevel cut to the front of the wall section. Reset your cutting guide back to zero and adjust the hot wire to a visually appealing angle. I, I got turned around here and initially I cut the bevel on the back side of the wall and on the front side, but you know, whatever. I could use it for something else. Just wrap your head around the complexity and make the cut to the correct side of the wall. Oh, important note, make sure you cut all the wall sections before you change the hot wire angle. You want that front wall bevel cut to match across all of the terrain you are making. Now I'm going to cut some wall segment separators. What's that? Well, it, it, it's a architectural element, you know, that goes between the walls. Kind of like a, a dragon's tooth or something. You know, it just looks cool. I imagine these wall segments are like Jersey road barriers where they get dropped and assembled on the battlefield. Yeah, I, I have 
a weird imagination. You can make these dragon's teeth any shape or size you want. Go ahead and reset your hot wire back to zero. We should be done with all of our complex bevel cuts. Once everything is cut, I'll knock down the edges of the foam with my X-Acto blade. I want to weather the wall and make it look like it's been sitting on the battlefield for a bit. You could go all in at this point. You could carve in cracks, bullet holes, give it as much unique texture as you like. Speaking of texture, I of course am going to use an aluminum ball to uh, give this wall some good texture prior to painting. You'll notice I'm not using hot glue for the smaller detail bits. Hot glue can melt this foam, especially when it gets very thin. So it's good old tacky glue for this part. Eh, I got it out. I might as well use it for the rest of the wall. Once assembled, set it aside and let it dry. You know, Dave, this seems entirely too easy. Maybe we should add some additional detail. You know, you're right. Let's add some paving stones to set this battlement on. And no, 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 they can't be common square stones. They should be super sci-fi hex shape. Yep, 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 yep. I cut some hex shapes out of cardstock to use as a template for the Proxon. I did a single hex, and I also did three hexes connected. Next, I cut some thin sheets of XPS foam. These are about a quarter inch in thickness. Using double-sided tape, I'll attach the cardstock to the XPS foam. We'll run the hot wire along the edge of the cardstock template to cut perfect hexes every time. Make sure your proxon is set to the lowest temperature for this cut. If your wire's too hot, you're gonna get some funky edges. Cut a lot of hexes. I mean, like, a lot. You'll need them. Now you'll need to cut out the grout lines. Use one of your cardstock templates to trace the inside lines. Then it's just a matter of using your X-Acto blade and carving out a small V-shaped groove. Also be sure to bevel all the edges so that it looks as if this paver is slightly worn. You'll then need to use an aluminum ball to imprint a little bit more texture. Go as aggressive as you like with this step, or skip it entirely, it's up to you. I may have gone a little overboard on the number of hexes. This is gonna be a larger piece of terrain, but hey, it's still less than like four bucks to make. Glue and let dry once again. You 
You know what I love doing in the morning? Yep, that's right. Waking my neighbors with the sound of a jigsaw as I cut out some terrain bases using this MDF hardboard. As you can see, sometime late last night, I glued the battlements to the hex pavers, let it dry. I also have cut out this nice piece of MDF board to hot glue everything together. Additionally, I've used a sanding block and I've smoothed the edges of the MDF base. I could not stop myself from this next step. I felt the need to break out my adhesive grout and blend these tiles into the MDF base. This is really optional. You don't need to do this. And you could also substitute plain spackle as opposed to grout. This step will add additional dry time, but I think I could still get this done in a weekend. Here's a wall section that I assembled without pavers. It's smaller in size, and I, I honestly think that it would be better for tabletop. It's not too large. I'm applying sand to this base. You know how much I love sand. I've got this giant piece of Tupperware where I'm gonna try to pour the sand on top of the piece of terrain and keep it from going all over my hobby space. I mean, it works, but gosh, I've got such a love-hate relationship with sand. Here we have both pieces of terrain. I sanded both of them. If I'm gonna get sand in my workspace, I wanna get it over with. I'm going to prime these using the standard black paint and Mod Podge mixture. And I'm going to apply a real fast dry brush. These are techniques I've gone over in detail with a few of my other videos. Now the standard YouTube yada yada, like, subscribe, and go check out those videos. So I'll spare you watching the basic paint application. So here we go, the finished product. Two wall sections, simple, fast, and inexpensive. I love the size of this smaller base. I could see using four of these on the table to make a fire base. It's a very versatile design. But you know, I think I like the color scheme on this larger wall section. As I build out the rest of this set, I'll still use the hex pavers, but I'll definitely make the base size smaller. It, right now it's pushing the boundary of scattered terrain kind of over into that of a diorama. And speaking of that, I did not put a lot of fiddly bits and foliage on these pieces. They're not meant to be dioramas. But don't let me stop you. If you want to do that, go right ahead. Over the next few weeks, I'll put pics up on Instagram as I work on this set, getting it rounded out. Because we could still easily make an entire table's worth of terrain for under $25. And until next time, peace.